Heather Rogers, Green Gone Wrong, How Our Economy Is Undermining the Environmental Revolution. In A Green Gone Wrong, How Our Economy Is Undermining the Environmental Revolution, Heather Rogers delves into the dark side of the environmental movement and unveils the hidden costs of green investments. By examining practices in organic farming, eco-luxury housing, the palm oil industry, and renewable energy, Rogers argues that market-driven solutions have frequently led to negative impacts on the environment and small business owners. Additionally, this book sheds light on the importance of regulations and community-driven initiatives in creating a sustainable future. Challenges for Small Organic Farmers Small organic farmers struggle to make ends meet despite commanding higher prices. Off-farm income is often necessary to survive, and increasing urbanization drives them away from their land. The official USDA organic certification is criticized for its inefficiency in testing produce and providing support to small farmers who are chemical-free. Moreover, Big Organic reinforces the economic and regulatory system that favors powerful food processors and agribusiness elites. Under the USDA guidelines, small meat processors find it pricey to maintain facilities, and consolidation in the beef industry has left few alternatives for farmers. The success of organic food has made life harder for small local farmers, as distribution channels prioritize deals with large producers for cost-effectiveness. As organic goes mainstream, its methods increasingly resemble environmentally destructive commercial practices that are meant to be challenged. The Organic Sugar Industry's Environmental Impact The Upper Piranha Atlantic Forest once covered 100 million acres, but deforestation for farmland, particularly organic monocrop sugarcane, has left only 8% remains. Lax organic certifiers enable even more deforestation, as the USDA's NOP rules don't prevent the destruction of existing ecosystems. AZPA, Paraguay's largest sugar producer, exemplifies the concerning practices of some organic producers, they use manure from factory farm chickens fed arsenic to plump them up. Though small farmers can earn fair compensation and certification, AZPA retains ownership of their certification, which prevents them from selling organic cane to anyone but AZPA. As farming families grow, they clear more land to support themselves. While markets cannot register the larger effects of consumers' choices, groups of small farmers can make a positive impact by obtaining organic and fair trade certifications. While a zero deforestation law passed in 2004, enforcement remains unfunded. The Evolution of Eco-Luxury In the 90s, being eco-friendly meant living in an austere home, but now, eco-luxury is the new trend. Passivau's design, incorporating airtight construction, ventilation systems, and triple-glazed windows, has replaced Earthships. While it comes with a hefty price tag, it's effective in energy conservation. Similarly, communities like Vauban and Freiburg in Germany utilize solar power and encourage a car-free lifestyle. The primary reasons for food scarcity are political and economic, not supply. In the 1990s, the concept of being eco-friendly was about living in an austere home made of recycled materials. However, today, the idea of eco-luxury has taken over, where you can do your part to avert climate change by buying things that support environmentally conscious practices. The half-buried structures known as F ships have given way to passive house designs that incorporate heat exchanger ventilation systems, triple glazed windows, and thickly insulated walls that work behind the scenes to conserve resources. Although retrofitting existing houses with these tenants can help homeowners save energy, the upfront cost of such homes can only be afforded by the wealthy. Apart from luxury homes, communities like Vauban and Freiburg in Germany have adopted solar power and a car-free lifestyle to promote sustainability. However, food scarcity is not due to a lack of supply, but political and economic constraints. While these upscale homes and communities come with a high price, they still offer long-term benefits of low maintenance and utility bills. The evolution of eco-luxury has shown that being environmentally conscious does not mean sacrificing comfort and luxury. The Dark Side of Palm Oil Plantations 
The demand for palm oil has led to the destruction of Borneo's rainforests, with indigenous communities being exploited and the law ignored. Despite global condemnation, international corporations and the International Finance Corporation continue to fund the palm oil industry's illegal and unethical practices. The U.S. indirectly supports the industry through subsidies and by mandating biodiesel blends. Agreements to pay developing countries to preserve their forests lack protections for indigenous peoples, highlighting the need to question the limits of market mechanisms as tools for environmental preservation. Hybrid Cars and the Transit System In the 1930s, U.S. car manufacturers dismantled urban transit systems in favor of cars. Today, the cost of restoring them is too high. This led consumers to purchase eco-friendly hybrid cars like the Toyota Prius. The Prius combines a gas and electric engine, reducing carbon emissions and saving on gas. Other car companies are following suit, but environmentalists claim that American automakers are suppressing fuel-conserving technologies. Despite this, European models already get higher miles per gallon. The need for alternative transportation is clear, as the gap between poverty and wealth widens and the idea of organic fades away. Green efforts, fraught outcomes. The risks and limitations of voluntary carbon offsetting in India are highlighted, demonstrating the need for systemic change rather than market-based solutions. Eco-conscious celebrities and individuals have turned to buying voluntary carbon offsets as a way to compensate for their carbon emissions from jet-setting lifestyles. The carbon neutral company, TCNC, helped Coldplay to fund the planting and nurturing of mango trees in poor regions of India to absorb atmospheric carbon. Unfortunately, only a third of the trees survive due to a lack of follow-through and accountability between TCNC and Women for Sustainable Development, WSD, a non-profit, which shows the limitations and risks of voluntary offsetting. Voluntary offsets don't have uniform guidelines or official oversight, unlike the UN-monitored credits that polluting industries receive under the Kyoto Protocol. Market mechanisms like carbon credits and offsets, which generate more than $4 billion annually, face growing resistance from grassroots activists for their ineffectiveness. A biofuel plant in rural India, for instance, provides sporadic electricity to villagers in unsafe conditions, with workers earning only $1 a day. Inflated job creation figures and exaggerated claims about helping the poor are rampant in carbon offset companies. Several non-profits are selling renewable energy solutions to poor Indians, but their high prices put them out of reach for many. Microsolar kits that cost around $260 generate only enough power for two light bulbs, for instance. Meanwhile, the government lacks a long-term commitment to building a nationwide renewable energy infrastructure, which could render such small efforts meaningless. Simple solutions like solar water heaters in Bangalore work better due to their straightforward nature, showing the futility of market-based emissions reduction schemes. This highlights the need for rethinking our values and reconsidering how we define well-being and quality of life, which currently depend on excess consumption and waste. Otherwise, systemic change is crucial to address global warming and ecological ruin effectively. Capitalism, Society, and Environment The book highlights the intimate link between the environment and social aspects of supply chains for goods and services for sale in the marketplace. The author debunks the idea that buying green goods and using crop biofuels would preserve green places and reduce global warming. The author proposes the use of regulations to achieve social goals such as reducing greenhouse gases without devastating the environment is more effective than leaving such achievements to market forces. Organic Valley is a conglomerate of organic dairy farmers who have formed groups that monitor members far beyond organic principles. Capitalism can meet the demands of markets and the challenges of climate change, but society must place a greater value on people and the planet. Heather Rogers for Green Gone Wrong exposes the shortcomings and paradoxes of relying solely on market forces to solve environmental issues. The book illuminates the need for a deep-rooted shift in our values and economic model to prioritize people and the environment over unchecked consumption. 
Through examples such as Organic Valley and other community-driven initiatives, the book suggests that capitalism can indeed contribute to sustainability, but only when society begins to place greater importance on preserving our planet and caring for its inhabitants.